Hey everybody, it's Dave, once again on the Base Channel, and welcome back to the Shorties series, where we're talking about short-scale basses. This time around, I've got one of Chris's personal basses. This is a 2015 Gibson SG Standard Bass. Uh, looks like the old EB3s from the 70s, because it's got two pickups. So this being a Gibson SG Bass, it's mahogany. It sounds like mahogany. It's finished in, of course, Gibson's famous Heritage Cherry. It's got a rosewood fretboard, all that stuff. 30 and a half inch scale, I believe all the Gibson shorties are. So this being a 2015, it's got a few appointments that other SG bases in recent production do not. Number one, stock, out of the gate, out of the box, it's got the Babich Bridge, Babix, Babish, the Binging with Babish Bridge, and the trapezoid inlays and the Gibson logo inlay on the headstock are all actual mother of pearl. Whereas the more recent ones are gonna be plastic, acrylic, so these are actual MOP. So that's what separates the 2015 model from the rest of the SG bases that have been out. They reintroduced them, I believe, in 2009 or so, and they've been in more or less constant production since then. You got your standards, which has the trapezoid inlays. You got your specials, which have flat finish and dot inlays, and there's been a couple of special editions here and there. They had uh, the California series that had the pastel colors, etc. So what makes a modern Gibson SG bass? It's different from the old vintage EB3s that had a couple of extra controls down here. Here, you get a mudbucker in the neck position, you get a mini humbucker in the bridge position, and you have volume, volume, tone. So the controls are more like a Fender Jazz bass. This, however, is generally the bass people think of when they think short scale basses. This is the Jack Bruce bass. This is the sound of the late 60s, early 70s, running through a giant tube amplifier, and it's very thumpy and muddy and woofy. But this one, being a modern SG, almost a tribute to itself, is a little bit brighter, a little bit more lively, and I think it sounds great, especially because Chris just recently put Ernie Ball, Music Man, Cobalt, flat wound strings on it. And I think compared to other flat wound strings, it just gives it way more zing and way more articulation. It's great. Speaking of those pickups, uh, again, it's 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 the modern era for Gibson now. This mudbucker doesn't sound like the old ones. This has a ceramic magnet in it, which I think attributes a little bit more of that lively character. And it's got, what, a third of the impedance, something like that, Chris? Um, the mini humbucker in the bridge position is an Alnico 2 mini bucker. So it's kind of like a Firebird pickup sneaking in there. And... Um, yeah, you can, if you run the controls flat out, both volumes open, you're not going to get the most character out of this bass. You back off one or two of the pickups to like a 7 or 8 out of 10, that's when you can get some really unique tones out of this guy. On and off over the years, I've had a couple of these myself. None of them had sounded or played half as well as this one. So that might speak to your Gibson quality control that has been just fantastic over the years. Or not. Depends. It really depends. Sometimes you can grab a Gibson off the wall and it's the greatest instrument you've ever played. Sometimes it's not. But this one is really nice. And I think that... If you have regular flat, like jazz flats on it or chrome flats on it, I think it's going to be too dead and I think you're not going to like it. But if you're anything like me, <laughs> nobody, nobody's anything like me. I think, I think that you would benefit from having the livelier string on here. So you get the feel of flats with cobalts, 
but they have a little bit more of that forward mid, a little bit more of the zing of rounds, and nice amount of volume. Um, and the tension is still very comfortable. It's not like a super stiff telephone cable kind of a flat. If you go into this base thinking it's all mud bucker all the time, you're gonna be missing out. The mini bucker in the bridge position is kind of an unsung hero. It surprised us. It surprised me when I played it uh, recently. It surprised Chris when he played it years ago. And what you'll get could be, I mean, this depends on, on so much of your rig and how you're running it, but it you could get some of that that kind of burpy, honky bridge sound that you might expect out of a jazz bass. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Shorties. This time it was a Gibson. Last time it was a Stingray. What's it going to be next time? We're not sure yet. Tune in and find out. We'll see you next time.